What we learned that if they turn their wrists inwards, that means they're about to die. Okay, if you're with someone who gets a head injury, you should never look at the position of their wrists to know if they're gonna be okay or if they're about to die. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and this is your number one source for learning about the unique medical side of the world of sports. UFC heavyweight Derek Lewis was recently on the Joe Rogan podcast and made some really interesting comments about wrist positioning after a head injury and whether or not it means you're gonna be okay or you're about to die. Even Rogan was like, really? So there's definitely some myth busting we need to do about this. As always, if you enjoy learning about this unique side of sports, please consider subscribing and hit that thumbs up button if you enjoy this video and let's get started. Let's listen back to his full comments. Well, we learned that if they turn their wrists inwards, that means they're about to die. Okay, so first off, this kind of position where your wrists turn in like that, that's technically something called pronation. So whenever you turn your palms up, that's supination. But if they turn it like the way Curtis was, then you're good. So then the other scenario, I guess, is just a more neutral position, not necessarily full supination, but probably more wrist neutral that he's referring to. He's referring his knockout of Curtis Blades. So let's go back and look at that to see exactly what Curtis did with his wrist positions. Certainly here, Blades' right wrist looks to be in more of a neutral position, sort of like what Lewis was referring to. And then here again, we can see Curtis's right arm kind of extended out, wrist in a little bit more of a neutral position, and also that left wrist a little bit more neutral as well. So definitely not pronated, but is it true what Lewis is saying about the wrist position being a sign of impending death? No, you should never look at someone's wrist position and say they're okay or they're going to die. What I think he's trying to get at is something called decorticate versus decerebrate posturing because we can see a little bit of a different position with the wrists in those posturing circumstances but that's only a small picture of the overall pattern that the body displays. Abnormal posturing is whenever the body displays some involuntary positioning of the limbs, in this case in response to some type of brain trauma. This is decorticate posturing, and if you're gonna compare which of the two is a better prognosis, decorticate is typically what comes before the decerebrate. So decerebrate's gonna be a more severe type of posturing. Here with decorticate posturing, basically you've lost activation of the extensors of your upper limbs. And so everything that's taking over are gonna be the flexors. So your elbows are flexed up, your arms are adducted and close to your body, your wrists are gonna be flexed down. And so you assume this position due to the overwhelming flexion activation of those upper limbs. It's possible this could look like there's some pronation of the wrist, but generally it might be a little bit more neutral, but the wrist positioning is not in any way sort of the defining factor of this type of posture. Looking at our biodigital anatomy tool, we can understand sort of the regions of the brain that are affected with these types of posturing. Decorticate posturing is gonna be a lesion coming from typically the cortex of the brain. So the cortex is gonna be the outermost layer of the brain that you really see if you look at the brain. This is gonna be the area where our primary motor cortex, our primary sensory cortex, the occipital lobe that helps with vision, that's all part of the brain cortex. So decorticate posturing, you can think of in general an injury to the brain above the brainstem somewhere in the cortex. Of course, our cerebellum is back here in the back side of the brain. That's the area that helps with our coordination. And then our brain stem is all the way down here at the bottom and this is gonna be the area that's sort of responsible for that automatic programming or control center of our brain and of our body. The other type of posturing is decerebrate posturing. And again, between the two, this is typically gonna be a more severe, although they're both quite severe in and of themselves. Now the difference you can see with decerebrate is you have extensor tone. So the extensor muscles of the arms are activated, causing you to extend your elbows, fire your triceps, and be straight out. Now here you will classically have more kind of pronation of the wrists. Again, the wrist positioning is a piece of this, but it's not like the wrist positioning defines the presence of posturing. The leg position is gonna look similar between these two. And so it really is a difference of decorticate posturing, arms kind of crossed up and flexed, decerebrate posturing, arms extended down at the side. Decerebrate posturing is typically from a lesion in the brainstem, specifically below a level of the midbrain called the red nucleus. Our brainstem has three different regions. Starting at the top, we have the midbrain, then we have the pons, and then we have the medulla. And so decerebrate posturing, we think of injury to the brainstem below the level of this red nucleus, which is generally why it's considered kind of more severe or the final stage of the posturing. Let's listen back one more time to what Derek Lewis was saying. Well, we learned that if they turn their wrists inwards, that means they're about to die. So that wrist pronation could be coming along with the decerebrate posturing, but your arms aren't gonna be flexed up like this. They're gonna be extended straight out. 
and you're gonna have other signs than just looking purely at the wrists. Yes, it's the sign of a very severe brain injury where death could be coming, but it's not as simple as saying wrists turned out, you're gonna die. That the body is shutting down, but if they turn it like the way Curtis was, then you're good. And again, more neutral, that could be what you see a little bit more with the decorticate or just no posturing. But you can have a horrible brain injury with intracranial bleeding and hemorrhage where you don't display this immediate posturing and it could be serious enough that it could be fatal. So for Lewis to really make it a black and white like wrist position, you're okay or you're gonna die, just really is not at all an appropriate way to look at somebody who's got a head injury. And definitely if you're with somebody playing a sport or whatever who gets a head injury, please, please, please do not look at the position of their wrists and say they're gonna die, they're gonna be okay. Get them proper medical attention because there's way more to the ultimate outcome from a brain injury than simply looking at the position of somebody's wrists. The other type of posturing we have to talk about in reference to head injuries is of course the fencing response. This is an abnormal posturing typically of the upper arm, but we can see it occur in the leg as well, where basically one of the limbs tends to go into this sort of fencing on guard position with the arm extended out away from you. There's belief this is invoking sort of this primitive reflex from when we were children and whenever you would fall, you would reflexively extend your arm to sort of protect you. So it's sort of this reactivation of this primitive reflex that's like a protective type of strategy. But again, with that, the wrist position in and of itself doesn't exactly correlate to how bad the brain injury is or what the outcome's gonna be. So you still should not use wrist position as a surrogate for severity and impending death even if we see the fencing response. The two classic examples I like to use are of course Ben Askren, when he got knocked out, he had that fencing response, but also had some extensor tone of that lower leg. And then Javid Best, another classic example of the fencing response. So interesting nonetheless, but again, please don't look at somebody's wrist position when they're knocked out and use that to determine if you should call for medical help or not simply because of what Derek Lewis said here about the position of the wrists. It's great that people are having some of these conversations with him to sort of get him interested in kind of learning about head injuries and the severity of head injuries, but it's important that we get good information so that we don't delay any potential medical care that could be needed if somebody has a bad brain injury and maybe isn't displaying these exact wrist positioning or even posturing types of signs. That's it for the video, everybody. Thank you as always for watching. Let me know any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later.